In this demo, we're going to use SSH Keygen to generate a new SSH public and private key pair. To start, we'll use SSH Keygen. And if you want to get the help menu for this tool, you'll need to type in dash dash help. Just doing dash H will not pull up the help. To generate the key, we need to tell the tool to type. For this, we're going to use the ED25519 keys. These are the Edwards keys, and they tend to be preferred because they're small but strong keys. They work really fast, they're pretty secure, and they don't have some of the problems that some of the older keys have. Also, the older keys tend to be really large files because in order to get the key strength up for the older style RSA keys, you have to have a very long key. We want to make sure that our key is encrypted with many rounds of encryption or hashing. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the parameter dash A and then pass in the number of rounds. And you can pass in a big number, like a couple hundred uh, easily. When the computer goes to use the key, it'll have to decrypt the key in order to use it. And 200 rounds may seem like a lot, but that's no problem for a single computer to handle one key that has 200 rounds. If an attacker is trying to crack your encrypted key, though, they're essentially going to have to use a dictionary of words to try to guess what your password is. And they're going to have to do that 200 rounds over and over and over again, and it really slows them down. So this is an important step. Next is we're going to give the output file a name and also pick where we're going to store it. And by default, we always want to keep our keys in the .ssh directory. This is where the computer is going to look for them when it tries to use them. So this is a great location. I'm going to call my key demo, but you should give yours a better name, of course. Name it after the computer you're going to use it on or some other name that indicates its purpose so you don't get it mixed up with all the other keys you generate. You don't want to reuse your keys for a bunch of different purposes, so you'll probably end up with several keys and you want to make sure that the naming convention is good. And this is it. We're ready to generate the key. We hit enter. The next thing we have to do is type in our passphrase. This is the passphrase used to do the 200 rounds of encryption, so you want to make sure it's a good, strong passphrase. You'll need to type it in twice. And after you do that, the system will do some math and generate the key and put the key into the directory. Now, notice that I had used the shortcut, the tilde symbol means my current home directory, and Linux automatically expanded that out to my home directory. So that's a matter of convenience. I could have typed out the entire path. To see the key, we can just print it out. And of course, you would never want to actually show anybody your private key. Uh, really, you don't even need to look at it yourself, generally speaking. This has to be kept absolutely secret. If this private key ever gets leaked, it's useless. You have to stop using it and start all over again. Now, the public key is going to be the same name, but it's going to have .pub on the end. And this public key is the one that you would put on the servers or in the cloud that you want to use your private key on. It is public, and so you don't have to worry about keeping it secure. But make sure that this private key is never copied anywhere and secure. It's always kept in a secrets manager or vault or uh, password storage or whatever secure location you have for your credentials. So you've generated your key and you're now ready to use it to authenticate with tools like SSH.